Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Scott. I'll be your host today. Got a great show for you today. A great, great podcast. Great guest. I'm um, going to bring him on in just a moment from across the pond. He's a Brit. I think he's my first European uh Guest. We're going to bring him on in just a moment. This week's episode brought to you by RaceAdvisors.com. Check out Race Advisor if you get a chance. We um we had the the owner Lauren Bruckner on uh, probably about a year ago now. She's developed really just an incredible resource, an incredible website over there. It's basically a, a database of all the races, everyone. Almost, I don't know, you think of it, and it's probably on there somewhere. It's just a great resource, so you can, if you ran a race, if you liked a race, or even if you didn't like a race, go on go on to Race Advisors, leave a review, and it just becomes a great resource for us. If you're thinking about doing a race, maybe you're not really sure what uh, what the race is all about, you can go on there, look it up, and um, read the reviews from past years, and see what, see what they have to say, and see if that race is for you. Just really a great ra- resource for us, raceadvisors.com. Check it out. As always, you can find this in the back episodes of our podcast at our website, OrdinaryMarathoner.com. Check that out if you get a chance. You can also find our Facebook discussion group. It's called Ordinary Marathoners. And you, it's a closed group, so you got to add yourself to it. But we put you through right away. And, uh, and you can join the discussion over there. It's really been a... An amazing year for the the discussion group. I think we've done a lot of really cool things and uh, really some really great people over there. It's up to almost we're, all, we're getting close to seven hundred, getting close to seven hundred members over there, and uh, would love to have you. So stop on by, join the group. Uh, you can find our YouTube channel over uh, over on YouTube. It's mostly just the audio of the podcast, but we are doing a video series with Stephanie and thinking about starting that in mid January. Really looking forward to that. Um, She's really looking forward to getting back into exercise mode. She opened all her Christmas presents this morning and got a lot of, uh, you know, running pants and shirts and, you know, a lot of stuff from, from you guys out there. She had a nice greasy girl shirt in there too, Mary, just so you know. She loved it. And, um, <laughs> I know I'm just plugging people now. Anyway, um, what else we got? Uh, follow me over at Twitter. You can find me at Ord Marathoner. That's O R D Marathoner. And if you follow me there, I'll follow you back. We can get the discussion going on over there as well. And with that, we're going to bring in our guest for today from, uh, I think this is my first international guest, actually. This is excellent. Uh, all the way from across the pond, Eric Keeler. Welcome to the program, Eric. Hello. You're making me feel special being the first international caller. You know, you might not, you know, now that I think about it, we had one, we had one Aussie. I uh, forgot all about so Greg, not, Greg Leach we had. So no, no, but you're the first. Yeah, you're you know you're the first uh, European. Let's How about we go with European, you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's good to go. But it, it makes me want. So I know I know kind of your. So our buddy Scott Frassard from over yep. at uh, Forever Home Running, who uh, he helps us out with our virtual race, uh, the Ordinary Marathon, which we do every year. Well, one year. This is, uh, will be our second year, uh, next year. So he, he said to me, you know, I know this guy, Eric Keeler, I've been following him. He's, he's doing the crazy stuff and, and you, you know, you should have him on the podcast. And now Scott's very good. He's a very good filter for me. So he, I know when he tells me like I should have, you know, some people are like, oh, you should have like everyone I know on your podcast and I have to like filter them out. But when Scott yeah. gives me a recommendation, I follow through. So I did a little, <laughs> so I was checking you out a little bit. And obviously your, uh, your big thing. You ran across the country. Yes, yeah. Put it in the shortest terms, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will. Ha- so this is episode number one ten of the podcast, and I have to say, you are not the first person to do that. That's on the podcast. We've actually had other. I think one, maybe two other guests do it. Um, oh wow! But what an incredible thing to do. Let's. So I want to start. From the beginning here. By the way, you're still you're right. still sporting the Forrest Gump beard, and I love that. <laughs> for the moment, I, it might be coming <laughs> off in a few weeks, but for now, it's it's still there. <laughs> so let me let me let's go right to the beginning because I do want to kind of take this piece by piece. Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, well, part of it was I got bored. Is <laughs> is one of the biggest things. I, I was just stuck in the same job for years and years, and this had been in my head since I was a kid as like just a really cool way of seeing a country. Yeah. Uh, without actually thinking I'd have the chance to do it, uh, and then as I was just getting into the same routine of work and just needing to get out of that, you know, day to dayness, I popped into my head again. I was like, you know what? Let's 
why can't I at least try this? What's the worst that can happen? I'll get a week into it and I'll fall apart and go home again. Yeah. So, so yeah. So how much planning went into this? Was this <clears> – <throat> so it sounds like it's something like you were always kind of thinking about and then when you made the decision – you probably took a couple of weeks to plan it out. It wasn't like a spontaneous, hey, I'm in Maine, oh, let's no, dip no. my toe in <laughs> and go. Uh, so, I mean, how much planning went into it? It was probably about three years worth of planning. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, the reason it was so long was mainly because I had to save the money. Ah, all right. It, that makes it's sense. not the cheapest thing to do, yeah. uh, especially when you're doing it fully self-supported. Um, so yeah, it was about three years of saving all the pennies I could, getting all the equipment ready and yeah. just planning as much as you can. So I and I, I saw a picture. It looked like so the other guest that we had that did this a similar thing. He had like a little carriage that he pushed. It was, I think it was a baby yes. stroller. So what, it, what one, yeah. is that? What you had too? I did. Yes. So yeah, you I loaded just, uh, it up and and just loaded up all my food, water, camping gear, um, shoes, clothes, everything so, I needed for eight months. <laughs> now, how did you plan the 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 route? How did you go about, like, where did you start? Where did you finish? And how did you plan? Did you, I mean, how much planning went into that? Like, exactly what route that, you were going to take? That was a lot. So I'm very meticulous. I have to have everything planned out before I get somewhere. Right. right. Uh, even if it all kind of, like, goes goes down the toilet in day one, <laughs> I feel like I still need to have it all planned out before. So I spent a lot of time on the route right down to where I was going to stay every single day. Um, and then after the first day, it you know, I had to take a different route, added 10 miles onto my first day. <laughs> and it was that it all went down the toilet. So, um, but you figured yeah. it out. Apparently you figured it out. Yes. Yeah. I got to the end. Um, but I mean, I, I, when I was planning it, I just picked all the places that I wanted to see. So really? Niagara Falls, Chicago, Denver, Grand Canyon, and then just line them all up. And then I was looking at the map after I got that bit done. I was thinking if I'm going to go ocean to ocean, I only got like three, 400 miles extra at the top and then i was the just gonna say right <laughs> so if we're gonna go like ocean to ocean i might as well just finish it off and do the diagonal as well uh which uh, you know it turned Man. into the whole corner to corner thing and uh yeah and then i just what was the total what was what was that you should have gotten like garmin to sponsor this thing this is incredible yeah, but I wish what, I would. <laughs> <laughs> what um what was the total mileage that you wound up doing 300 uh no 3646 miles and how long did it take you uh, 186 days oh wow that's not it bad stays yeah so what was what was your average per day then it's uh it sounds, uh, it sounds the like average pretty the average was only about 26 or 25 miles a day only uh, well yeah <laughs> when, <laughs> when i st when i started off it was uh I was doing like 18, 19 mile days, which seemed insane at the time. Yeah. Uh, and then towards the end, every day was over 33, 34 miles. So did you think, um, so you were, did, did you improve that mileage because you felt like you were getting used to it or did you feel like, I mean, I, I would be worried more about breaking down and having to, you know, have a few days in there where you do like two miles and they're walking because you yeah. need a little rest. Did you have any of those days or? Oh yeah, no, there was there was days when, like for me, the main thing was getting to the other side by foot. You know, if I needed to take a day where I was walking, then it was no issue for me. I'd take a day walking. You know, I I wasn't as strict. I have to run every single step. Yeah. Uh, as long as I did the whole thing by foot, taking a walking day when needed, I I did. Right, right. Uh, so did did you ever step in a car at all the whole time, or did you? Yes, I had uh, <laughs> I had three parts where I had to. I had to take a car. Yeah. One of them was, uh, it like was through a mountain pass. It was through a mountain pass in Vermont was yep. the first one. Uh, and they were having building works and they just wouldn't let me walk up there or run up there or go by foot. Uh, and the nearest detour would have added about 400 miles on. Gotcha. So uh, you get a break for that one. I'll give you that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other two times was, uh, in California. Uh, I had to go through military base. There were two Marine bases gotcha. and, being a Brit, I'm not allowed through. Oh, yeah. So, you guys, we don't trust you guys. I know. No one does. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, but I mean, that's, un I mean, obviously that's understandable too. If you, yes, yeah. If they're coming at you with machine guns. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take You're going to take the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I didn't mind. When I had to, I did, but it was only when I really had to. Yeah. So, all right. So, you had this long, long, long ass run um 
was there any moments during that time where you were like, uh, like close to thinking this is too hard. This is ridiculous. I should go home. Um, there was lots of points like that, but there was probably two that stick in my head. The first was about two weeks in and my Achilles um, swelled up. It was like having two tennis balls on the back of my ankle. Um, really really bad uh and i kept plowing through and they didn't get better and i said to myself one night it's all right if i wake up in the morning and they're still just as bad then i'm either gonna take two weeks off to recover or i'll just call it and yeah. go home and somehow i woke up the next day and they were back down to how they were you're like and you're like damn it was, yeah i, was, <laughs> I want to go home <laughs> yeah i was ready after two weeks i was over <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the uh yeah the second time was in iowa uh, i got run off the road by a semi truck oh geez uh, see that yeah. would be my my big my i think my biggest concern when planning a trip like that because i i do not that i i, I don't know that i've ever i have designs on actually doing it um because i am not even i mean but i i can understand the desire to do it because it sounds really cool it just sounds like it a really is. cool thing to do um would be the traffic and setting up the route in such a way that, you know, you minimize the chance of getting hit by a semi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happened with the truck? Was it a like a – how bad was it? It was it was a big – I don't know, like a 12, 14-wheeler. So it was a big, big semi truck and the guy was just on his uh, on his cell uh, at the yeah. time. Uh, not looking, he just – I saw him from quite a way off that he was on his phone and – uh, yeah, he just drifted over the shoulder, over the rumble strip, um, still didn't even take his eyes off his phone. Yeah. Uh, um, and I obviously went as far to the edge of the road as I could, and there's a big ditch next to me. And, uh, yeah, the wind from his semi blew me in the stroller into the ditch. Um, and when he went past, I I genuinely thought, this this is it. Yeah, you, I, I you thought that was, you know, I was finished. Oh, um, geez, if that happens but, multiple times, I mean, that could... Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and uh, yeah. So the the guy in the semi truck behind, he pulled over, helped me out the ditch, and he oh. was like, "I was." He said it was in within half a foot, and oh my god! Yeah, he he said he expected just mush yeah. to come out. The that is back. the oh man, I <laughs> know. And and the other truck driver I don't even just know what to say to that. Didn't have a clue. Yeah, didn't he just kept going? I tell just you, kept so, going. So I did uh, when I did a uh, like a bike race through Maryland and. I had a similar, like a, there was just an open road area and a truck came, came by when I was on the bike, very little shoulder. There was a turn I, and there was a car coming the other way. So I knew he had to, and it just, and the wind, like you said, yeah, uh, you know, I was shocked he didn't blow me over and I didn't, I didn't get injured. And it just, even when I say, whenever I bike, I mean, all the accidents you see, it's just so scary. Oh yeah. So scary. And, when you're on and the, the road, cell phones are road make the... everything worse. Yeah. And when you're on the road all the time, you see... All the accidents, and you see all the debris from previous accidents. Right. So you see that, uh, right? The tra the uh, yeah. the skid marks into the side, yeah. and and all the tires that have just blown everywhere. Oh man! And it's uh, it is more crazy when you're looking at it every single day. You realize how much of a mess <laughs> there is on the roads, right. and how many people are on their phones. Probably you see a it's... lot of dead animals. What was the weirdest dead animal that you saw? Oh. <laughs> I think that's that's a, probably the first time that question's ever been asked. The weirdest. I mean, there's got to be like a raccoon. There's got to be like a, a yeah, possum, I've seen, I've maybe a deer or two. Oh, lots of deers. Yeah, uh, raccoons, possums, deers. Uh, there was uh, oh no, a bobcat. Get yeah. uh, it, was, it was only I assume it's a bobcat. It didn't seem as big as I thought it'd be. Yeah, but it yeah, was definitely not too big. But yeah, it, it was a cat. It was a cat or feline animal. It wasn't a house cat, right, but it, it wasn't. It, it was somewhere in between. <laughs> right. Right. That's uh, uh, that's sad. Now, uh, Stephanie's not going to be able to listen to this podcast because she'll cry. <laughs> My wife cries when she hears all this stuff. We can't. Uh, we drive by like a dead skunk in the road and she gets upset. That's just the way she well, is. Well, the, the, the smell of them now kind of haunts me. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, you smell them before you get even see them. Oh, the skunks are uh, the worst. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just any kind of road kill after it's been out in the in the sun yeah, in Kansas right. for the so whole what, summer. What day? Like, what was your time? Like, when when did you start this? Yeah, you know, I would, if you ran 180 something days, so you probably tried to avoid winter, I would assume. Yes. Yeah, I started the 29th of April. Okay, that's uh, a good. That's and a that good, was yeah. yeah, that was uh, upon the Canadian border. 
in Maine. You know, it's funny is I started, I, I ran, I believe that was a Saturday or Sunday. And I think that was the same day as a, a local half marathon. So that day you and I both started running. I ran 13 <laughs> miles and called it quits and thought, and thought I achieved something. <laughs> You ran 3,000 miles. <laughs> and then just plopped into the ocean at the end. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. That is great. I, I I hear these stories and I'm just, I don't know, I'm astounded. And especially, like you said, you, you know, you said it took you like three years to, to save up the money to do it. Uh, I, you know, I give it to you, man. That's, that's a hard thing to do. Now, you were also raising money for charity at a certain point, right? What, uh, yes. what, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the charity is called Spinal Research, um, and they're based in London, and they they just do what they say on the tin, pretty much. They they fund research into try and repair the spinal column, uh, the spinal cord after accidents. Yeah, um, which you almost so, got you into know, one. You might have needed. Yeah, them. very close. Yeah, well, at least you know either. people there. <laughs> Yeah, I got some help. <laughs> I got a head start. <laughs> um, yeah, but they they fund groundbreaking research all over the world, um, and all the money that comes into them is is from fundraisers doing marathons and cycle events. Right. Uh, so you know they don't get any government funding. And so what? Yeah, where, how can how can if any of my listeners are out there and and you know are interested in don't is it still open the fundraiser or? Yes, yeah, we're open for a few more months. And where can uh, they where can they find it through your Facebook page or? Uh, if they go onto my website, which is uh, it's uh, corner to corner dot run. Uh, corner really dot run that dot run is yes. a thing. I know that's, that's what great. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I heard, I was like, got to get that <laughs> corner to corner dot run. That's great. I got to yes. check that out myself. I don't think I've been on the site, uh, but uh, no, I think it's great. And uh, you know, it seems like you got a lot of attention during during the. Were you? Were you Facebooking the entire time? Was it was it more of a personal thing, or were you out there trying to kind of you know keep? Were people like looking, following you, and trying to figure out? Uh, it it kind of built up. I mean, at, at the start, it was I, I keep updating Facebook at the end of every day with how far I'd gone and what had happened during the day, yeah. and that was mainly for you know the, the family and friends back home who were right, keeping right. up with it. But then you meet so many people along the way. Uh, like every day, you're meeting four, five, six people. Yeah, and then. That's cool. Two of them will follow you for the whole rest of the journey. So by the time you get to California, I had so many people like commenting on all the photos like every day, you yeah. know, they'd be commenting on the updates, say, oh, well done, loving seeing the photos, keep going, you need it there. And by the end of it, you end up with this huge, huge yeah. <laughs> following. Before, before you know it, people are coming up to you and say, hey, you should be on this guy's podcast. Exactly. And that, <laughs> that's how I found you. <laughs> that's great, man. That is great. So let me ask you this. So... Uh, three thousand six seven hundred miles, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, if there was one story from the road, one thing that um stays in your mind about the experience, uh, like one day that was just better than all the rest, what would you? What was the best oh. part of the journey? You can That's, be broad too if you don't. If you yeah, don't have anything I mean, specific, I mean, you can very... be broad and if you if you like. What was what was the best part? I just thought. I mean, maybe just finishing. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that was. I mean, that was uh, pretty amazing <laughs> in itself. Just getting to the ocean. Uh, and you had some people I mean, there waiting for you. It looked like there were a few people there yes, waiting for you. Yeah, my family was there, and there was uh, some people awesome. from a running club and a few other Facebook groups. So it was a nice, nice little ending. So let me ask. Uh, so, so but, you... yeah, I mean, for for a single for a single thing, it's kind of hard to pick i mean the whole of arizona was just incredible right well, the whole uh, the yeah. scenery and national parks and the grand canyon um it's got to be so is, weird like seeing i mean that's i guess the whole beauty of doing the trip from going you know from the midwest you said you went through iowa and you probably saw a bunch mm, of cornfields and that's all i saw right and then you go to arizona and uh, you know they probably can't even grow corn there so it's like, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just canyons and rocks everywhere. <laughs> and, um go ahead but yeah, every, every state had its own beautiful thing. I mean, I personally, I didn't like Iowa, mainly because I got run <laughs> off the road. There was tornadoes. Um, I, I had no Tor cell service for most of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even Iowa, it was still beautiful. Yeah, They still had things about it, and the people that I met still gave me good memories for it. Yeah. Um, but I think mainly it was the people that I met along the way. That's they were the, They're the things that stick in my head so were there people like that just saw you running on the side side of the road and just were like hey like what what's the deal yeah. here what are you pushing <laughs> this thing what's up now was the did the beard literally begin when you began or no i mean it's probably it's, about half the length 
um <laughs> when i started uh-huh. but i just i just didn't do anything to it and you must day. have had some forrest gump comments with that i mean that must be a thing every, every day I know, i'm sorry <laughs> See, I'm the for, right, I'm forrest gump was easy top <laughs> right <laughs> it's, it's one or the other <laughs> so i mean but you were me so it sounds like you're meeting a lot of people and and you know it's kind yeah. of like a cool story to tell it's like you're in the middle of Iowa and you just run into someone and they're like, Hey, look at this guy. What are you doing with that thing? Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah. Especially when you're, you're in the middle of nowhere, yeah. uh, you know, like 50 miles from any town oh. and, uh, someone will just pull up and it's like, are you all right? You, are you <laughs> meant you to be here? here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, some people will call the police and say there's a crazy guy pushing his baby down the highway. Uh, so the police, are, <laughs> it happened more than once. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the police would rock up and especially in Kansas, they were incredibly friendly. They'd, they'd pull up and, you know, bring me water and sandwiches. Oh, that's cool. And then they'd be like, next time we're going to pass down in like three more hours. So we'll check, make sure you've got everything you need. And they let like the next, uh, the next township's police force know that I was coming through. Uh, so they, I mean, the police you know, are is, amazing. The people are, they amazing. must be really bored. You know, they just must be <laughs> like, it's like, you're like there the most no, exciting thing that there. happens out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's like two people a year who pass through that little bit of Kansas and that's it. <laughs> that's great, man. So, I mean, why, why the States you just wanted? Uh, well, is when I got the idea of running across the country, it was after seeing a guy on the news who was doing it. And this is probably like 20 odd years ago. Uh, so it was always in my head as run across America. Yeah. Uh, but another part of it was I could have run across Europe, but then I would have had to learn 20 languages right. to survive. I hear you. <laughs> Which in some, in some parts of America, it felt like I needed another language. <laughs> right. I, I would think I'd run, you know, I could run across the UK, but I mean, it's not as, it would take like it's, three it's, days. It's not exciting. No, you take, <laughs> I think it takes like maybe six. Six. <laughs> I wouldn't but, have a uh, fanfare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not as I mean, yeah, it sounds cool you ran across the UK, but I mean you ran across America. You can say you've run across a continent. Right, technically. Ex- yeah, pretty much. Well ocean to ocean is, you know. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. I I'm uh, I, I'm just I'm I'm amazed. I'm just amazed at this. Um <laughs> <laughs> So so what's next for you? Do you have anything else on tap besides cutting the beard, um, maybe? <laughs> um yeah, it's probably gonna be settling in, finding a job. In the, the real world, real... <laughs> my bank account is telling me I need to start work again. <laughs> so unfortunately, I think it's gonna gonna be uh, starting work. But I don't know. I'm thinking of maybe starting a kind of a running lifestyle apparel company here in the UK. There you go. And tie, tying it in with some virtual virtual events. So um, where can we find? So there's the website you said. What is it? Co- yes, coast yeah. to coast dot run. It's corner to corner. Corner to corner. Run. Yeah. See, I'm going to write it down because I want to go. There. I wanna... <laughs> Remember I told you, so I told them before the podcast, I'm like, I'm like, because you have an email that's a little different from your, yeah. your name. And, yeah. and if anyone listens to the podcast, they'll know I've gotten your, your name wrong in the last two times I've, uh, I've tried to tease the show. Um, but I, I said, let me write your name down because I know I'm going to forget it later on. <laughs> and it's true. I would, I would have forgotten it. Um, so just, you, just write everything down. You don't want to forget anything. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. Uh, my brain, I don't know. I'm 44. You'd think it would be working. It should be in his peak brain brain period. <laughs> yeah. No, it just, I just, I can't pronounce anything. I had a guest on a couple weeks ago, just mispronounced his name. Um, <laughs> and I do that a lot. One woman I actually had come on and I said, how do you pronounce your name? And she told me and I, and two minutes later I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> Was her name Sue? <laughs> it's no. probably like the easiest name That's possible. That's like right, the easiest one. Sue Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You sure it's not Smythe? Like <laughs> so Smythe, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Um, so when you come back to the states, you're not. You're you're working, man. You're going back to work. Yeah. You well, I mean, beard. everyone's saying, everyone's saying to me, you know, are you gonna kind of go back the other way? And if if I could afford it, yeah, I so, hundred percent would. Have you ever? I mean, so have you ever run marathons in the past? Like what? I mean, did you? Are you always been running or? I only started running 2013 was my first race, uh-huh. uh, and I did the London Marathon. Uh, I was yeah. raising money for spinal research at the same time. Do you have like uh, a personal – is there a personal um, connection? To- uh, not a huge connection. I mean, originally, I just wanted to do the London Marathon, right. uh, and the only way left was to get a charity place. Um, and thankfully, I've got no family or friends who've had cancer or leukemia or anything. Yeah. Uh, 
so that I had no connection to them. But I've got friends who've had mountain biking accidents and snowboarding accidents and they're broken right. parts of their spine and I had vertebrae, a disc removed and vertebrae fused together. So that was kind of the only connection I had for the charity. Um, right. and, and the more I've done for them and looked into what they actually do, the more I love the charity. They're amazing, amazing group of people doing amazing things. So, so did you do more marathons after that or is it just, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, my first time running was actually the London marathon. I didn't train for it. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're one of these guys. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I don't, the thing is, I don't really like running that much. It, <laughs> it hurts. It's painful. It's time consuming, but I just like the big shiny medal at the end. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the thing? It's like, oh, I'll never do that again. And then in two, two seconds yeah. later, then when's the next one? Oh, exactly. I got I to sign up for this one. Same thing with 99% of runners, pretty much. <laughs> so what? Um, um, so did you run any, any more after that? Or yes. Any more? Yeah, I did. Uh, I've done the London Marathon twice since. Yeah. Uh, once since. I've done Berlin and Frankfurt Marathon. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I've done one or two ultras. I did a 50K and a 100K. I was going to say, you're, um, you, you strike me as an ultra guy. <laughs> I just got tired of just doing marathon distances yeah. i wanted to kind of push myself a bit yeah uh and in my head once i've done one distance i have to outdo myself so i did a marathon I, I'm, like, you know, what can i do I'm this similar, better yeah <laughs> i'm similar right now i gotta go a little little further a little further but yeah um what did you do any extra training for this did you change your training or did you just um you're gonna hate me for saying this and but i know <laughs> I, I did i did train at all <laughs> But I mean, uh, all right, I, so, I, so you ran the London Marathon in 2014, and after that, you did London, London again, and you did Berlin, and you did Frankfurt, and you did some ultras. Yep. So you're not you're not brand new to this by by the time you dip no, your toe. I, I in. usually do one race a year, maybe two sometimes. Yeah, so uh, but I don't I don't run in between. That's that's the main thing. <laughs> I just wake up and go, oh, I should have trained for this. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll train for the next one. And then I never do. Yeah. I, I had a friend like that. And I, when I lived in Manhattan that, uh, he signed up for the New York city marathon. He had done it before. And this time he just didn't train. And then he woke up on marathon morning, uh, and just rolled out of bed and said, yeah, why not? And just went and did it. And he didn't do <laughs> any, and he posted like a real, like a sub four hour, you know, like what? with no training. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, <laughs> <sighs> I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I'm the opposite. I won't do any training, but I'm like my best marathon is uh, five hours and tw- uh, two seconds. Ah, there you go. Uh, which is really annoying for those two seconds. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, that's the time you can expect for not training. So, do you have any? Much. Do you have any designs on breaking that five hour mark? Is there any part of you that? Yes. All right. Yeah, so I'm when... going back to Berlin uh, next year You're or all... this year when the podcast come out i got a little 2019. Uh, i get a little um advice for you if you want to break it if you want to break through five hours uh you should probably train yeah well maybe <laughs> I thought, if i do one training run then that should knock those two seconds off exactly that's all you need and, yeah. <laughs> just that little, yeah, just one run one run just to get to get those two <laughs> seconds back all right, yeah. so, so let me ask you this when you were running did you have like a watch did you know you were close to five hours was there something that we like oh i gotta hustle uh, yes. up yeah, so I you had, knew I had, I had my Fitbit for it. Uh-huh. Um, so I knew it was at Berlin as well. So it's a nice flat course. It's nice and fast. Yeah. And I remember I got to probably about 2K, 3K out. And I looked at the watch. I was doing the maths in my head. I was like, this is this is possible. I can actually get under five hours at last. And uh, so I was like, right, stay at this pace, stay at this pace. And then I slowly got a bit faster and a bit faster. And I stayed at the pace, yet my watch seemed to somehow tell me I was going slower. And I was like, no, this can't oh, be right. Man. So I just Blame the watch. watch. Just blame the, I blame the watch. For yeah, me. not the train. It's the watch. By the way, you know, uh, so I, 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 gotta t- I just got to tell you, my, so my PR, I just said it uh, two months ago. Four hours, 59 minutes, 34 seconds. Oh, you must have been happy with that. Oh, I was. I was but I'm just trying to give you a number to beat. All right. I'm giving you another. So I've got to get past it. Yeah, so you might have to do two training runs. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know how that's going to go. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. But yeah, man. so I ended, I ended up sprinting the last uh, one and a half K. And as I was getting closer, oh, I could see the finish line. I was like, no, no, no. And but the even, then, even then, yeah, uh, you got to wait for the official time. So you're not, yeah. you, you can't trust your own watch on those exactly. things. And you're like, oh. 
So you on probably my watch, had a... I, was, I was two seconds under on my watch. So I was like, I've done it. And then I got oh. my time. I was like, oh, no. Oh, man. Because, you know, sometimes they have like two or three timing mats at the end. Yes. And you never know which one's the actual final. I always think it's the first one, but may, maybe it's not. Maybe yeah, yeah. it's, you it's know. the last one. Maybe it's the it last one. It just took me two seconds. Did that last step. Exactly. Maybe either that or maybe it didn't pick up your time through the first yeah. one. And so they got you on the emergency backup, which it was a two be, second yeah. difference, four second difference. Uh, I'm so it to, wasn't the training. It's, it's blaming, blaming but, the. Uh, look, I'm but, trying to blame anything else. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to, to give do you it. a way out. Trying to give you a way out here. Listen, Eric, um, <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a blast, man. I, I, no worries. You know, I saw, I saw your Facebook stuff. I was, and I'm like, and I knew Scott, uh, you know, Scott's a good, good judge of character. And I had a blast, man. This was great. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me on. I've enjoyed it. Well, where, uh, where, so we can find you at the website. Yes. Corner, corner to corner. corner dot run. run. Uh, yeah. And we can find you on Facebook, Eric Keeler. Uh, if you, you go onto my website, there's a link to Facebook and Instagram through oh, my perfect. website. Perfect. Uh, Instagram is probably the best one, uh, and that's run.the.usa. Awesome. Uh, it's a nice and easy, but yeah. you can get all the social media through the website. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I probably, you know, I, I've, you've almost talked me into like going back and, and trying to read up on some of your. You're, well, I definitely want to check out the website. I didn't even know about the website. So, <laughs> well, if you go back through Instagram and Facebook, there's like every day I did an update post of the people I met and what happened on the road. Yeah, uh, there's there's a whole seven days going through the Mojave Desert. Um, you, you should you should plug the podcast on the next one. Just to give you a hint. Oh, all right. I, I, I'm sure I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So if you go back there, the, the whole story is up there. <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, I'm so I'm so glad to met you. This was uh, this was very interesting. And um, what else is there? Something else I had? I think I think we're good, man. Thanks so much for coming on. No worries. If you think of anything else, oh, you know what I want to know? The beard. When's the beard coming off? And you know what uh, you should do? You I... should. I think. And I think I saw. Are you doing it for like charity? You should totally do yes. it for charity. Yes, uh, we're on, oh, I think in dollars now. Uh, I think we're on about $15,000 and we need another $1,000 of donations and then it and gets then shaved it comes off. All oh, right, it's got to yeah. be a big to do. Yeah. You should do it on like Facebook Live or YouTube or something. Yes, yeah, we're going to do it live. Uh, but you guys got to see this thing. I got to post a picture of this thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't it's, seen much it is, it is It is wonderful, uh, man. That is. I could never grow that. I'm like stubbly, but I'm like, I just well, don't have I'll, send, I'll send it over to you and you can oh, turn I'll just, a, I'll a just bit, attach bit it. <laughs> I'll get some glue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, listen, thanks, Eric Keeler, for coming on. And uh, we're going to wrap it up there. We will be back next week. Um, I got a I got a board full of guests. I don't know where I'm going next, but uh, we'll bring one of them in. Uh, we'll, find a, we'll find a few of them. We're, we're getting close to year end. I do a new new year's resolution special every year. I've been racking my brain on that. We'll get that together. And until then, always remember when it comes to running, I'm no expert. I'm just ordinary. <laughs> <laughs>